Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, good morning and a very warm welcome to Parcel and Post Expo here in Amsterdam. Um, my name is Tony Robinson and uh, my role in all of this is that I'm the founder uh, of uh, what was originally called Post Expo um, and which started way back in 1997. And it was a good idea launching Post Expo uh, because there was a lot of changing technology going on, a lot of interesting things happening. Uh, I didn't expect, necessarily, in 1997, uh, to find that we would rebrand the show to Parcel and Post Expo um, because of the obvious uh, and amazing transformation that the post industry went through as the internet and online shopping came to life. And, you know, I often talk about this same subject when I open this particular conference, that um, the, the interesting thing is that we've lived through a revolution and we often don't necessarily spot the fact that we've done that. Because in 1997, the interesting thing is the internet didn't really exist. Now, I know the purists here would say, well, actually, it did. But I'm not a purist, necessarily, and I would say it didn't exist. Um, we, in 1977, we were still dealing with that unbelievable thing, the ADSL dial-up. And I know most of you will remember that funny tune that we used to listen to before anything appeared on our computer screens. And finally, we were on something that was a bit like the internet. Um, the other thing that was going on about 1997 um, was an interesting startup sort of thing, which was a company called Amazon Books. And they'd gone into the, what in my opinion was a rather bizarre world of selling books online. Now, I have to admit that I didn't give it much of a chance. I thought, well, why would people want to do this? You know, you can go down to your local bookshop, buy almost any book that you want, and take it home. Um, I've since written a story which is titled Bezos 10, Robinson Nil. Um, and that's really the way it went, because obviously what happened next was quite extraordinary. And of course, it's completely transformed uh, the entire postal industry. So what is this show all about? Parcel and Post Expo, um, a very important industry event. And, and the reason it's very important is because it's where innovation and new technologies are shown invariably for the first time. And, and it's that innovation that drives the opportunity and the many changes that have taken place um, in your industry, which has gone through a complete and absolute revolution and couldn't have been turned upside down more than uh, it has been. Uh, really quite extraordinary. Um, so what are we going to see next? Well, crystal ball gazing is a great game, as we all know. Um, obviously, the world of artificial intelligence is going to create completely transformed methods of decision making. Uh, even decision-making that may be in its control, not even in our control. And I think we're going to have some discussions going on during the course of the next uh, two days where we're going to look at the implications of artificial intelligence. It's certainly going to be the next revolution. And how do we, as humans, actually control the decision-making that could very dangerously left, be left entirely to computers? So that'll be a fascinating area of discussion that we're going to get into, uh, along with many others to do with sustainability and the other problems that we see uh, around the world. Now, I'm just going to say one other thing, really, at this point in time, um, and that is, um, what are you, what are we? And what, what this industry is all about is a friendly camaraderie and cooperation. Um, what this event is about 
is discussion and swapping ideas, um, learning about new things, seeing new technologies. Most important of all, this is a friendly event where we would like to invite all of you to get involved. Uh, we'll probably do some questions sessions. We're going to have some round tables. But we'd like to ask you, because you're all experts in your own right, to offer up your thoughts and opinions. So while we're here with a lot of speakers, a lot of expert people, you too are the experts and do get involved and, and, and make these discussions that we're going to be having nicely interactive because it'll be much more fun and we want it to be fun, friendly, happy and enjoyable and informative. Now, um, we'll have a very important person here who is going to say some words on behalf of the UPU and that's Maran Oswald. I don't think Maran needs really much of an introduction um, from me because as Director uh, Deputy Director General of the Universal Postal U Union. Uh, he's extremely well known to all of you. Uh, very grateful that Maran, you are here with us today. Um, the other person I'd like to just say thank you to is um, Amanda Martinez. Um, Amanda has very kindly agreed to moderate the session sessions going on um, for all of today. It's quite a big job to do and she's volunteered. Thank you, Amanda. And just a little bit about Amanda. Um, her background is that she's uh, an independent advisor to the postal industry based in Cologne in Germany. And uh, Amanda was formerly with the United States Postal Service USPS in Washington, D.C. Um, what she's done over the years is uh, she's worked with a lot of startups, and as you know, uh, we have a, a, a lot of startup and uh, postal innovation activity going on here uh, during Parcel and Post Expo. And Am Amanda Martinez is very much part of that whole thriving, young, and up and coming community. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that's it from me. Um, I, I would just say, um, first of all, thank you very much uh, for those of you. I know many of you have traveled big distances to be with us. Um, we are expecting around 240, 250 UPU member participants to join us. And of course, inevitably on the opening morning, not everybody has got here yet. So we look forward to welcoming those people and uh, seeing the numbers grow uh, as the day goes on. So that is it from me. And um, Maran, over to you, please. Uh, thank you, Tony, for this very kind introduction, actually. Uh, I remember uh, my first uh, uh, post-expo was 97, was it in Hamburg, right? Yeah, in 97. And 97, Tony was uh, actually famous for wearing uh, turtleneck uh, pullovers. So last year was 1-0 uh, for Tony, and this year is 1-1, one, one, if I may continue with this story. Thank you, Tony. Dear colleague, partners, and friends, good morning. It is a true pleasure to stand here for a second time to welcome you all at the UPU World Leaders Forum. This year's theme across borders and beyond limits, Blueprints for Lasting Innovation, speaks to several unique aspects of our postal network. The first aspect is universality. Through the national postal services of the UPU network of 192 member countries, we have built bridges that we have connected the entire world for nearly a century and a half. Today, we continue to foster, expand, and reinforce those bridges and to build bonds with partners with the UPU family and beyond. This was underscored most recently during our fourth extraordinary Congress. Welcome, dear colleagues from Saudi Arabia, which approved a roadmap for strengthening engagement with members of the wider postal sector, many of whom are in this room today. A warm welcome also to you. The second aspect underlined by our team is our drive to continue transforming our business. 
Since 1874, the UPU has provided a forum for the postal sector to gather so as to address challenges, seize opportunities and shape its own future. Together, we have persisted despite the advent of competing networks and technologies from telegraphs and telephones to the internet and beyond. However, past achievements do not always guarantee future success. We cannot afford to rest on our laurels. We must anticipate the needs and technologies that will determine the context of our business in five or 10 years from now. It is at global forums such as the UPU World Leaders Forum that we can come together to do exactly that. Today and tomorrow, you will hear from leaders in the postal sector, our postal visionaries, on four key topics. They will share how they envisage the future of our business in four key areas, namely e-commerce and logistics, diversification, sustainability, and trust and security. We will also hear from drivers of strategy in these areas as to how we, as an industry, can design our roadmap towards continued evolution and success. I would express my thanks to you, Tony, your company, for extending the invitation to hold this forum over the course of two entire days. We will use this time to the full. On this note, I wish you all a fruitful discussion. Thank you very much. And if I may uh, use this opportunity, you are more than welcome to visit the most beautiful stand. It's the UPU stand. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, and thanks to the UPU for uh, letting me be a part of this. We're going to have some really interesting discussions today. Uh, Tony, thank you for mentioning me as part of the young community, uh, getting close to 40. Um, I really appreciate that. And um, a great note about change, because the two topics that we'll be discussing today um, are diversification and logistics and cross-border e-commerce. Uh, so with that, I'll call our four panelists up. Um, as Tony mentioned, we really want everyone's participation. It's going to be uh, discussion style, so I'll be asking questions to our experts here, and um, feel free to ask questions as well. There'll be two people on each, uh, there'll be one person on each side um, from the event that will have mics, so if you have a question, uh, please raise your hand, and we'll include you in this, the discussion as well. Um, if you don't have a question and you just want to talk about something relevant that you're doing at your post or agency, uh, please speak up as well. So, um, panelists, if you if you would like to come up, and we'll get started. And uh, Marge mentioned the, the UPU booth. I would like to add to that that uh, from 10.30 to 12.30, um, there'll be coffee and croissants there. Um, those are being uh, provided by ADS. So ADS is the first African uh, business that's part of the UPU CC, and they'll be there at the booth as well, so have a chat with them. Hi. Um, I'll sit here if you guys want to, to fill in. I'll, I'll be at the end, yes. All right, um, so we have with us uh, this morning, and we'll just go through one by one. I have His Excellency uh, Anef Abadami uh, from Saudi Post. And um, talk to us a little bit about the evolving postal logistics uh, landscape in Saudi Arabia and in the GCC, and the, your strategies and vision for um, prioritizing um, how to create value for uh, uh, cross-border e-commerce in that environment. Sure, so first I'd like to Thank you for this warm welcome and appreciate my colleagues and peers and look forward to meaningful and fruitful discussions over the next few days. Um, the challenge I made to myself and, and the team is I get a little excited and I kind of get carried away. So my job today is to minimize how uh, enthusiastic I'm, uh, I am about this topic and try to stay within the time. So um, with that said, I know I have some slides prepared and I don't know if we're presenting them or not, but uh, yeah. uh, very simply, I was, uh, next slide please, I was uh, honored to be 
uh, appointed as the president of uh, Saudi Post at the beginning of 2019. I had a very, very straightforward mission, take something that has been uh, notoriously uh, inefficient, uh, limited productivity, but very important for the country, and transform it into an economically sustainable and viable service provider that can uh, also impact the economy of the country. And this is part of a bigger story that our country is going through, which is um, around the transformation of Saudi Arabia, which was uh, kind of encapsulated with the launch of the Vision 2030 strategy in 2016 or so. So the job I had was to make sure I was relevant in that context. So how can we be economically sustainable and viable on our own, but also how do we impact the country and how do we make sure we take advantage of our uh, geographical location between the three continents, how we can be a logistics uh, hub for the region and how can we uh, really be meaningful for that. If we can go to the next slide, sorry. And in that context, and I try to make it very, very simple to just visualize, where we started from was on the left-hand side, which is a postal operator, traditional focusing on being a communications platform. So we pick up mail, deliver mail, a business that was very slowly becoming irrelevant, especially in a country like ours where digitization was at the forefront of our agenda as a key enabler for any of the transformation that we're doing. So it was highly prioritized and had a lot of investment and focus for us. So I came in finding myself not only being in a very small and shrinking business, but being in a very irrelevant one and a very inefficient one. And we looked at this challenge and, and started recruiting a team and, and building a very uh, challenging story around what can we do? How can we be relevant? What are we going to do? And we quickly realized that thinking as a postal operator, a traditional postal operator, is not going to allow us to become that sustainable and successful uh, entity. So we need to think about what is it that we can do? And there's a few principles in, in, uh, that we've adopted. One is a shift from being a communications platform to being a logistics platform. And this ties into the discussion we just had around uh, are we going to have in the next uh, in the next session round becoming an e-commerce player, uh, and how do we participate in that? And how do we look at the thank you? How do we look at the other parts of the industry where we can create value? Where can we serve? Where can we participate? How can we engage with our customers and create value for them and capture some of that value, leveraging the capabilities, assets, strengths that we have as a postal operator, both physically but also digitally. The other uh, principle was going from doing things manually to introducing automation and digitization to really amplify and create efficiency and create impact for our customers. I think Tony mentioned earlier that the, this Congress shifted from being a post to a post and parcel. So this is very simply the same mindset we approached. We went from being Saudi Post to Saudi Post and logistics. And that's a very, very important principle we wanted to anchor in and, and make it front and center in, in, in what we did. We are no longer just a postal operator looking to be a communications channel provider, but rather a, a logistics uh, arm, a, a facilitator to move things around and help move things around irrespective of how. Then we had to look at the, the landscape. So at that time in 2019, we were a regulator as well. So how can we be a regulator and a service uh, provider for the industry at the same time? So first job I did was really carving out that regulator bit and moving it to the other parts of the government that can do a better job and focusing really our efforts, investments on becoming a better service provider and the transformation we needed to do to become relevant and in fact for as well. So, it's a very, very exciting journey. We're still in the, in the, I'd say, halfway point of that. And then in the last five years, we've accomplished a lot. We've, we've introduced new services, improved how we serve our customers. We've been able to double our revenue, almost reduce a third or 30% of our costs, uh, improved our quality and experience, and really made uh, another principle that was very important for us, uh, front and center for us, is becoming data-driven. So our decisions are not based on our reactions or our uh, instincts only, but rather based on data that we capture and also use that data sometimes as services themselves. So how we serve our customers, uh, the customer experience, uh, data points, our employee productivity, all of that is captured, analyzed, synthesized, and reintroduced in terms of important elements of our services uh, and how we, we measure our, our success and progression. 
So let's see if this works. There we go. So when we looked at the market, we're also very late entrant into the logistics market. Um, we had a lot of low tier uh, operators coming in. And what I mean by that are entities that really focused on the last mile, asset light, uh, which do produce good services. However, they also, in our minds, um, tend to dilute some of the service and some of the value that's being created by the traditional operators and creating new sets of challenges uh, that we have to overcome. Um, we also find a very weird situation where our customers are becoming competitors and suppliers. So when we look at the Amazons of the world or noon in our part of the world, they are our customers on one side, but they're also our competitors because they have their own fleets and their own capabilities that are competing with us head to head. Um, there is also a push to kind of uh, fragment the, the different parts of the value chain. Uh, so you'd had suppliers uh, provide our customers who are maybe in the Far East and China or whatnot trying to uh, deliver to their customers in Saudi, but looking at multiple service providers to deliver on different parts of the, uh, uh, of the value chain, which also introduces challenges in where we have investments and where we have value to capture and that's being disrupted. So those are new challenges that we, we weren't designed for and we're trying to now address and adapt to. Um, the very strong push to make the services we provide, especially in the last mile, commoditized and driving the prices down. So this is the market we're coming into and we're adapting to and we're trying to uh, deal with and address. And um, our approach to doing that is really focus on becoming a customer-centric organization and, and really focus on what our customers want. And our customers here are also a complicated uh, uh, kind of a description because our customers are the e-commerce providers, but also their customers, the end users, we are also serving them as well. So we need to take that very carefully and understand what value our customers, e-commerce merchants in this example, value and what is important for them as we serve their customers on their behalf and ensure we are uh, fulfilling that obligation, really creating stickiness and a good understanding of what we do there. And, and there's tons of examples uh, that we've gone through over the last few years that I think have benefited us. And one of the things we really need to be good at, all of us as, as uh, postal operators, is telling our customers what we do well and, and how we do it well. So the information we capture while we deliver parcels on their behalf, the experiences we deliver, and most of the time, positive ones uh, need to be relayed and need to be relayed to justify and sometimes convince our customers of the value of dealing with the service, uh, the postal service providers. So customer centricity is a very important um, philosophy uh, and approach and, and that, that's anchored in our strategy. Um, being a uh, understanding the market maturity and being uh, not afraid to disrupt ourselves and challenge ourselves as all of these technologies and tools and capabilities are made available, we should be using them. We should be looking at how do we introduce them uh, into our own operations, introduce them into our own capabilities and offerings uh, rather than being afraid from them or distant from them. Uh, being um, innovative and, and really taking the lead and disrupting ourselves, I think is a very important part of the strategy that we've, we've also had to uh, adopt and looking at our partners' network. So don't try to do everything on your own. Look at working with others, merchants, suppliers, service providers, technology providers. Uh, I think all of those are important partners to keep with you in the same mission and, and, and join forces to create incremental value that will be shared amongst, amongst the other. Uh, and a very important part of, uh, again, the, the strategy and the, and, and, and the principles we adopt is, is really care about the people. The people, the employees, the team you have, uh, they need to be front and center in this process. They need to believe in the mission you're doing. They need to believe in uh, the value they are capable of creating. Otherwise, it will not be uh, uh, achievable and attainable. So uh, making that also front and center uh, to enable and unlock all of the potential we have, I think, is very, very important. Um, and then, uh, again, last point is um, be always uh, front and center with your clients about the value you can create for them and commit to and actually deliver. All right, out of time, so try to be under 10 minutes, so <laughs> apologize, huh? thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency. And uh, wow, doubling uh, the revenue, we'll definitely have to dive into that a little sure. bit more in the discussion. 
Um, also with us Thank today, we much. have Marsha Price. Marsha is the Postmaster General uh, at Belize Post. Um, so tell us, Marsha, a little bit about how um, in this logistics and cross-border e-commerce space, um, you're really tying in entrepreneurs uh, uh, in Belize to the rest of the Caribbean. Well, basically, hi, good morning and welcome. I'm Marsha Price from Belize Postal Service. Um, basically, our aim at Belize Post is to provide that culture of excellence, right? And that be it with our team members and with our customers, providing that best end-to-end -end experience for our customers. Not only am I the Postmaster General, but I lecture entrepreneurship at the university in Belize, right? So it goes hand in hand in what I do. And uh, from an entrepreneurial standpoint, it's since COVID-19, there have been so many entrepreneurs, so many entrepreneurial ventures coming about recently. So it's how the posts can aid those customers to at least having the comfort of receiving their goods into the confines of their homes, right? What can we do as the post? And also how we can um, advance e-commerce. Currently, since we are government owned, we don't have that budget as we would like to have to at least to assist entrepreneurs more. So I think that is something that is really lacking to help those entrepreneurs. Remember, at the end of the day, we need these entrepreneurs in order to provide e-commerce. So that is something that's very, very vital for, for us. So how do we bridge that gap? So let me go into the presentation. Okay, so simply um, e-commerce, cross-border e-commerce is international e-commerce. So in order to aid that, we need that platform, right? We need websites, we need software technology. So currently the Post is developing a website, revamping its website to have a better website in order to aid e-commerce. And with that, we have asked the UPU for assistance um, especially when it comes to the dot post to see, to use their platform to see exactly how they can assist Belize Postal Service for this service. We have also assisted uh, with our logistics management, how we move our services. Um, recently, from, I have joined the post since 2021, so we have not provided same day delivery. So recently we have started with that same day delivery um, within some of our areas. So that is a huge achievement for Belize Post. So we don't have the technology as yet, so certain things we are doing manually. So it can be achieved. It has, it, you have to do more work with it, but definitely it's something that I want to push for the Post. So we are working with managing our logistics um, as best as we can. Technology, we don't have a front-end system but we are working with different partners to see how, what front-end system is best for Belize Post. We know that one size does not fit all. So sometimes you see the different companies providing a front-end system, but we have to find one that will adjust the Belize Postal Service. When it comes to data analytics and artificial intelligence, um, it's important because recently we have been piloting with a local company within Belize to do use AI for our customer support. And we had done some um, pilot testing and it was rather interesting because in Belize we have, we speak broken English. English is our main language, but sometimes how the customers would ask questions, the artificial intelligence actually can understand what they, um, they have programmed it into a way that the system can understand and they think that they are talking to actual human beings. So AI is very, very um, important. It's very interesting for us. Um, collaboration, collaboration is important. We have to collaborate with partners, with different stakeholders of the posts. So that is something that is important for the development of e-commerce. Right, so at being leaders in logistics, we have so many competition that exists in Belize and every day you see different um, 
couriers popping up in Belize, so there is a market for that exists in Belize for um, when it comes to couriers. So do it. But the posts, we have that expansive network. We are located in all districts within Belize City. We employ over 130 employees, and uh, we provide that first and last mile delivery for our customers. Not only do we deliver parcels, but remember, it's also developing economic growth for our country. Right? And as mentioned, we have to develop our infrastructure, um, our buildings, um, systems. You require human resources because remember, we need people to conduct marketing, that marketing aspect, right? We need sales to at least assist what corporations and MSMEs would require. Um, we need financial resources. That is very, very, very vital to any post. Um, recently, we have collab with a small bu a business in Belize City to provide boxes for us to deliver that flat rate box. Um, digitalization, that is crucial. And people want to track their items to see exactly where their items are. So that is something that we see vital within e-commerce and logistics. Um, providing that end-to-end -end digital platform is crucial. And that is something that is a part of our strategy within Belize Post, right? Um, we have to provide better rates for our customers, and that is with the flat rate boxes. We need to work closely with our customs department because that is very, very important. Because people with e-commerce, remember, pe people don't want to be taxed these high custom duties, but the um, economy requires taxes for growth, right, and expansion. So it's how we bridge that gap with customs department. Um, customer support, people want answers to where their packages are. So that is vital, especially for that culture of excellence that we want to employ at Belize Force, right? Compare awareness. We don't have the necessary finance. So what we do, we go old school in the sense that we visit customers, right? We go business to business and we speak. I go with my team, right? And we see exactly what the customers want. And then people want faster, but they want it cheaper, right? So they want cheaper services, right? MSMEs, they want better rates. Hence, the flat rate boxes is what we want to int introduce for them. Currently, we have that weight, weight pricing. So based on the weight, then that is how your price for goods. But giving, that, give, giving them that flat rate box, that will help them very well, right? Customer support, as I mentioned, campaign awareness and the biggest hurdle that we have within the Caribbean is finance, right? Um, especially in Belize. Um, so financing can help with everything. Once you have finance, you can assist your post in many ways, right? Um, supply, su su the supply chain can be strengthened if you come together as post and buy things in bulk, right? So that can assist as well. Um, Cross-border, as I mentioned before, is very crucial when it comes to MSMEs. Those are the ones that require the e-commerce. How do we get them? Currently in Belize, most of our items, we buy clothing and so forth that comes into the country. But what goes out of Belize? Right? What do people want from within the Caribbean? We have so many that to offer, but people, people are not aware of it. So how do we educate? How do we collaborate? right, in order to provide better service, right? And that is with providing more entrepreneurial activities to know customers better what they want and how we can build e-commerce. Thank you. Thanks, Marcia. It really sounds like you're, you're working hand in hand with uh, entrepreneurs there and seeing it more as a partnership and yes. not just a, a customer relationship. Yeah. Yes. Uh, we also have with us today Taj Rumerman with uh, Executive Committee of Post NL and Spring Global Delivery Solutions. Um, can you tell us a little bit about uh, the UPU side of things and how the UPU uh, can help with operators and helping them keep up with this ever-changing e-commerce environment? 
Yeah, Amanda, thank you very much. Um, so let me first say on behalf of the Dutch people, welcome in <laughs> Nederland. <laughs> so welcome to Holland. So we really appreciate that you are here. Um, and obviously, uh, there are some of you that I don't know, so I will quickly introduce myself. My name is Thijs Reumerman. I'm responsible for international within PostNL, that's the post of the Netherlands, and I'm also in the executive board of PostNL. Uh, and next to that, I'm CEO of Spring. And I will guide you a bit on what we think and what I think the, our collective dream should be. But before I do that, so what do we do? In PostNL, in the international department, we have two brands. So out of the Netherlands, out of Belgium, we have the PostNL brand. And out of the rest of the countries in the world, we use the Spring brand. Well, we have uh, uh, several locations, as you can see on the slide. Uh, we're present in three continents. So out of Canada, we also serve customers in the US. They're also present here, thanks very much. Um, and out of Hong Kong, we serve, uh, for example, Chinese customers, large platforms, etc. Next to that, we have a lot of companies in Europe where we build a European network. So that's basically what I do the whole day. So a bit more about Spring, because I noticed that in kind of, well, uh, meetings like this, UPU meetings, a lot of people know PostNL, but a few only know what Spring is. And Spring is also PostNL, but our brand outside of the Benelux. So it is founded as a joint venture between Singapore Post, Royal Mail, PostNL in the early days when mail was really large and uh, re-mail was very large and we all collectively well, saw a bright future in mail. But then suddenly we had to change the company into an e-commerce service providing company. That is really hard. And I can tell because I've been in the industry for about 14 years and I've seen the change within PostNL, within Spring. So what is really important for Spring? Obviously, local hero, Benelux. So we would like to have all the volume in the Netherlands and in Belgium. So if you still have volume over there for the Netherlands, it's really tidy, eh? and Belgium is even more <laughs> tiny, well, then give me a call. But next to that, local heroes in every country are really important to us. So the business model of Spring is really to go to those customers like you do. Go to those customers and look into what their needs are, very locally, but also help them with expand in cross-border. And in order to do that, we are not going to build our own network. There are a lot of companies that have their own network. There are a lot of companies that want to build a large worldwide network in their own hands. We don't want to do that. We want to partner together with a lot of you here in the audience. And we think that's a more winning strategy because customers are not the same in each country. What we see in Europe, that's even deferred per, per country, it's even different. But then it's totally different than what you see, what our customers want in the US or even Canada. And that's totally different what our large platform customers want in China. So that is the basis of Spring. We want to collaborate with the networks there are. And that brings me to my dream for the UPU. And my dream for the UPU is perhaps a bit strange and large, but I think if you really want to make something out of the UPU, we should all direct our efforts into two things. One is becoming one network. And not only physical, because that's the thing that we have done a number of years already, but the thing is becoming digital. And to combine that digital with the physical flow and then make sure that our customers give their customers what they need and especially the local heroes in a lot of countries are very well equipped for that. And the thing is, we can't be collectively the most cheap 
network. I don't believe in that. We also can't be the most fast network in the world. I don't believe in that either. But what we can do together, and that's my dream and also my plea for the UPU, is we can be the most reliable network of the world by investing in digital, by investing in that we know where our parcels are, by investing in interoperability, by investing in making sure there are standards that we comply with, that we can help each other with, and to help each other with living this dream. So the coming three days, I hope that you will all remember that if the UPU, if our cross-border international networks want to sustain for another 30 years, we really have to look into how we work together and how we can help each other. So that's my dream and my plea. Amanda, thank you very much. Great, thank you. I'm going to put you on the spot about that dream in a few minutes. <laughs> Um, okay, we also have with us uh, this morning uh, Ivana Verfischtra, um, who's a member of the executive man management at Post Slovenia. Um, Ivana, can you share with us your strategic vi vision uh, for cross-border e-commerce with Post Slovenia, especially considering your, your unique position geographically? Um, hello to everybody. It's really a privilege to be here on this stage um, and to be able to share with you um, the story of uh, Slovenian Post. Maybe in the beginning a little bit uh, in more information about Slovenia. I'm not sure if you have ever been there. It's a small country in Central East Europe. It's 2.1 uh, habitants, so we are small. Uh, but uh, we are really advanced in uh, internet uh, usage uh, as a population, so we are in the, I would say, 92% of Slovenian population regularly access to, to internet, which offer us a great foundation for a big uh, transformation where we are uh, in the middle right now in Slovenian post. And on the other side, 70% of, um, of Slovenian population regularly shop online. But there is one specific, more than 80%, almost 90% of all e-commerce purchasing is made on domestic uh, online shops. Um, of course, that means there is a lot of space for uh, cross uh, border e-commerce cooperation and that is where our focus in our new strategic cycle will be. So Slovenian Post is like uh, every other postal operator, is based on uh, providing universal postal service and uh, some other uh, traditional services to, 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 to the publics and uh, one of the just the slide. Where? Okay. Um, and one of the crucial challenges that we have, how to change this mindset, so to, to make this mind shift from the business operation model where all infrastructure and all activities are around the product, around the shipment, and focused on the shipper sender to the mindset and the business operational model where we'll be totally customer centric and focus on our customers. Postal operators traditionally had a large contact with the customers. So there is almost none customer in every country. They did not have any contact with the postal operators, with our postmen, with our people. But we never in the past we didn't build our customer base. We didn't, um, we wasn't focused on the customer, but we always focused on the sender, on our business partners. That means uh, governance, that means uh, companies uh, who send uh, business documentation, 
uh, or um, invoice <laughs> to, 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 to the customers. And uh, this is really the, cr the, crucial, the crucial thing and everything else uh, are just tools how to make this shift. But this is also the most, the most um, complicated things that we should do. Because uh, if you can see the slide, this is one part uh, of our uh, new strategy. Uh, so because we would like to be the part of this, the biggest postal uh, transformation in the history. Some of our, I would say some of other industries already did this in the, in the, in the past. We, we know on example, some really traditional industries uh, like banks or insurance companies, they started with this transformation to be much more customer focused 10 years ago, 15 years ago, and now we are, we are also following. Um, but um, right, right, right now, we're in the middle of this transformation. So, but what is most interesting uh, thing when I uh, listen uh, colleagues and when uh, I was uh, reading a lot of reports uh, and data from uh, many of your uh, companies to get some insight uh, what's happening in the postal, uh, postal uh, sector, is that if I would move, if I would erase the yellow color where there is a Slovenian post brand, I'm sure that we could uh, take this light and to put almost in every of your um, country, country strategy. So that means we all know what we have to do. So theoretically, um, there is nothing new in this, but, but the magic is somewhere else. We as a postal sector, we like to communicate in uh, some um, technical phrases. We like, to, um, uh, we, we like to use jargons. There are many jargons here in, uh, in this slide. Uh, technically based, it's more about uh, the, the tools that we will use how to become customer centric. But even if we would have all money on the world, and to buy today on this also fair, the best technology, the best uh, AI tools to use all those things that we have, it doesn't mean that we will be successful because there is some soft side on the other part of our business, which is connected with customer experience, with the customer zone, where we in the past were not the best, but that means we have a lot of space for improvement. And uh, it's not so bad that decreasing of universal postal services a little bit push us in this direction. So that means that more than 84% of postal operators think that in the five, next five years, the biggest focus should be in collaboration with the cross-border e-commerce because there is the, 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 the whole magic. And um, I like to make some uh, comparison with the best practices in some other industries. And maybe just to ask, uh, an example, who is the Pepsi person and who is the Coke person? Please, Coke person, get rice. Okay, Pepsi? Okay, a little bit more for Coke, but it's normal. Why? Because if we compare Coke and Pepsi, it's one of the most customer-centric brands, very, very successful, both in their strategies, but they are completely different. But why I wanted to say this to you? Because the taste is not a unique experience. It's not true that if you, I give you something to drink, that everybody will say, yes, this is the best soda or this is the best drink. So it's the same in our business right now. So that's the reason why we have to cooperate and hear the way, where the magic is. And the magic 
is the combination of traditional coke, like postal operators, with sense of um, playful, uh, open, full, innovative Pepsi model will give us the, 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 successful, um, the, the successful equation. So that means P, P is for digital. We believe in blended digital in digital world, not just the digital. E is engagement, engagement of the customer and engagement of employees. Uh, the second P is brand preference. How many of you measure brand preference? How many? But it's great. It's very important metric because it's connected with the loyalty. Uh, S is seamless omnichannel experience. So we have big networks, but we have to provide to the customer really seamless experience through all those channels. Uh, and it's not connect just with technology. And I, I is intuitive user experience without jargons, with BI language. In the company when I was working before, the project to implementation of BI language, you know what is BI language, is one of the most important projects in the company. I was working in insurance industry before, so you can imagine, but I can tell you that in postal, it's, <laughs> I, 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 I need three months to understand all those technical words. And I'm the, I was the customer and I didn't have a clue what's happening around me with these words. And CC from Coca-Cola is collaborate over competition. So that means as a postal operator, you said it very nice. We had the biggest network and we have to use it and we have to cooperate, not just to compete. And just to conclu conclude with HF, is anybody has a clue what is HF? Because this is really big differentiator from the previous uh, postal business models. Anybody has a clue? What is HF? Probably think something with finance or no? Mr. Robbins said it at the end of his speech. It's have fun. <laughs> yeah, but it's crucial because in postal business, we were regulate, we were really heavy regulated. Everything processes has to be strictly and uh, magic to be much more close to to cross-border e-commerce partners is to start to have fun with what we are doing. And I think this is one of the crucial points. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'll just come start with you then. Um, you talked about how uh, most of the e-commerce in Slovenia is domestic, over 90%, um, which is astounding. What what is your vision for that in the next five to 10 years and how you want to grow that and how big a part of, of your overall strategy for the post is that? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, Slovenia is in this part pretty specific, but also for the few um, last years, there is um, quite uh, increase also uh, um, with purchasing on uh, uh, European and non-European. Um, online shops, especially with entrance of About You, Zalando, Zoho Plus, uh, and some other really uh, global uh, cross-board uh, e-commerce. Uh, but also, uh, what is important, that Slovenia has a few really big and successful e-commerce platforms, and they are right now one of the fastest uh, growing e-commerce uh, and I can proudly say that we started to work with them this year and that was really a big step for us because uh, you know if you would like to be successful in this cooperation uh, we have to make a um, lot of internal uh, processes uh, upgrades technical um, technical innovations, uh, APIs, and so on. But the most important thing is to understand their strategy and how they, how they serve their customers. On example, 
one of our biggest uh, uh, one of our biggest um, business partner and one of the biggest uh, European uh, e-commerce. What is the question they they ask every new employee? Very important question. They ask them, what is the most buying product in the basket? What do you think? And this e-commerce is for beauty. So cosmetics, beauty, and so on. What do you think? What is the most buying product in the basket? Ladies? Makeup cosmetics, no. no. It's delivery. What? It's delivery. They are in our business. They take our business in their strategy, and that's uh, um, and and why? Because sixty-eight percent of the customer, their customer, they say if they are not satisfied with the delivery, they will not come back to this store. And they start to own our product, our solutions and to own our customers. And the future will be not competition between postal operators and uh, with uh, competition with, uh, with um, private-owned delivery companies, couriers, and so on, and so on. but uh, the, 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 the battle, the playground, will be on the zone of who is the owner, where is the ownership of the customer. And that's what Amazon is doing right now, and so on. So it's a, a lot of potential, and uh, e-commerce will growing for sure. So that means that we have to be prepared uh, and to step to this uh, train. Your Excellency, a similar question. You mentioned uh, that you've went into a business that was shrinking. You've doubled the revenues there. How much of that were, was in the cross-border logistics and e-commerce space? And thinking forward and how you want to continue to grow that, how much of that focus is on international? Sure. So, um, as many of you might know, Saudi Arabia in general is an inbound country when it comes to e-commerce. Uh, that's changing. Um, and that's, again, going back to uh, the country's strategy and, and vision 2030 and, and making Saudi a hub. Uh, so we're making it a lot more uh, convenient for uh, entities to come in, set up business, set up shop to serve the market uh, domestically and serve from the domestic uh, capabilities, but also serving the neighboring countries and neighboring regions. So when, when I joined, um, I would say we were mostly, uh, when it comes to e-commerce, playing a very, very minor role in serving the domestic market. Um, and I don't think we had any real products serving uh, international markets. It was probably just the uh, normal uh, postal offerings that we had that uh, if the origin countries were using the postal operators, we'd be receiving them. Um, and we looked at, we needed to, we had a significant revenue challenge uh, and a very high cost structure. Uh, so um, we, had, we had to fix both. We had to fix our revenue uh, and look at the opportunity we had and address the uh, cost uh, challenges that we had in investing in the right areas. So we had to diversify our business within the core, so in the delivery business, we looked at who are customers we could potentially serve and serve better if we m either created new offerings or modified our existing offerings. And with e-commerce, uh, that was clearly uh, an opportunity looking at the domestic market and the international market. And we we're slowly uh, moving towards that. We've set up a, an international uh, unit now, just approved the strategy last week. So uh, we're, we're getting bigger and bigger in, in that area because we do believe we have a significant opportunity and a significant right to play in that, uh, in that space due to the location of Saudi Arabia, the capabilities, not only within Saudi Post uh, and Logistics Group, but also the kingdom and what we're doing there. So there's a lots of uh, different areas when it comes to e-commerce. And I agree with my colleagues. I think understanding how to be um, effective and, and disrupting uh, and innovative in disrupting uh, those, those, uh, those arenas. And it's not on, when I say innovation, it's not only around the technology use, but the operating models and the business models you apply and the partner network you want to work with uh, to 
create value together and, and share that value together because uh, we truly believe in, in, in a philosophy that having a, a small part of a very, very big pie is much better than having a full uh, size of a very, very small pie. So looking at um, where the volumes are being originated, what experience uh, the customers, our customers would want to deliver to their customers and aligning ourselves there and maybe even enriching uh, their, their perspective of what can be delivered uh, to their customers. Um, and that, that, that really stems down to uh, transparency, consistency, uh, and uh, to some extent flexibility, but, but really the transparency part is the most important part. How you share data, how you share information that allows you to customize and control the experience end to end. And I think ultimately that's what customers want and what, to, what they want to offer as a differentiation to their own customers. So e-commerce and cross-border for us is going to grow. Um, the opportunity is there. Uh, it, we need to always continue to disrupt ourselves and how we think and how we approach uh, those opportunities and challenges. And I think the, as, as we evolve as operators, as we evolve in how we uh, organize ourselves, um, there will be new opportunities and new threats. And again, you have to continuously go through that cycle of how do we want to evolve and change to uh, capture some of that market, capture that growth, uh, and deliver a consistent, reliable, transparent uh, experience that creates value. And your challenge really is how to capture some of that, your fair share of that value, if that's the right word to use. Um, and that, that's, that's how we're approaching it. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's interesting to hear that because you talked about your shrinking business before, but I think globally, um, you know, there's the fear, the concern that posts are becoming or are starting to become uh, the, the operator of last resort when it comes to cross-border because uh, a lot of times simply the, the offers aren't there. And uh, I think this can tie into to your dream, uh, Taj, of uh, one collective network and this being facilitated by the UPU. Um, how would how would that work? What would be the the starting point in creating something like that so that Post can really create more value in the cross border logistics world? Yeah, I think the beauty is we already have all the like UPU memberships, etc. So we know each other. That's the beauty. So we are building on something that we have already. The capabilities are not yet there, but we can we can help each other with with becoming like the e-commerce expert of the world. But the thing is, you have to know each other, you have to help each other, and you have to look into what your customer needs are. What we can't have is that every operator only looks domestically. Because what you see now happening is, if domestically everything is all right, it's probably not fit for international customers. And what you see is that international customers will also take over a big part of your domestic piece. So we have to look in together, what are our standards? How can we make that flexibility in the total chain? How can we see where our parcels are? How can we be more predictable? And I think it starts with building on the foundation that we have within a lot of years history, and then looking forward into what our customer needs are, and then collectively say, this is what we want. One network which will cater for all those different needs in which we will help each other to look into what do we need, what do our customers need, and how do we learn from each other. And I think the UPU is perfect for that. However, it should be going a bit faster because if we wait for the UPU, then probably we will be there, but within 200 years, probably it will be a bit different industry than now. So I totally agree with you. We have to look into how can we help each other? How can we make this a big network, but also cater for all the customer needs that there are? And what has been your experience? You had mentioned that you know spring is all over in North America and Europe and, and also in the East. And, you said that, um, that you don't want to be the end-to-end -end provider. So you're having to collaborate and establish partnerships. How are you working with the, the postal operators there and all the countries that you're working with? And what are some of these best practices of kind of addressing this fragmented uh, value chain? 
Yeah, that's a very good question. And that differs a bit on if you look into Europe and the postal partners in Europe or in the rest of the world. So what I see is that a lot of uh, uh, companies make use of the postal networks in the rest of the world area because of the ease of customs, which is really a benefit for the UPU and, and what we achieve together. So I think that is a large thing that we should, well, be more vocal about. If you look into Europe, we also work with all the partners that there are in Europe, postal partners, commercial partners, and there we see that some of the postal companies are really catching up and really see how they have to transform their company, own the, the, the consumer, because I totally agree with you, that is the, the thing that you have to do, own the consumer, so that also the large parties want to work with you. So that's on one side, some of the very um, uh, successful postal companies in Europe. But on the other side, we also see some postal companies that are only focusing on domestic. They will probably lose because you also have to have this international cross-border angle. And what we do is we have uh, people running around in Europe talking to all those companies, talking to the boards, talking to their customers, but also talking to a lot of different stakeholders. And then we try to be as smart together as we can, because our enemy or our competitor are not the post. But our competitor is like the large platforms of this world that own the last mile, or their will or want to own the last mile. And that's what we should take into account. So that's how we do stuff. We help companies, we help company customers grow, but we also help our partners grow by feeding them back what we see in their networks. And to give you a, a slight example, so like I was with a large platform in Asia like eight years ago, and they didn't even ask, you have to deliver my parcel, but they asked, you have to live, deliver the data. That's it. If you deliver the data, and that was totally new for me then. And that's why we really are fund of investing in transparency, where parcels is, not to be the cheapest network, but at least to be the most reliable network. Thank you. Yeah, I, I mean, a lot of it goes back to customer centricity and everyone touched on that this morning. Um, uh, Marsha, you specifically talked about visiting entrepreneurs in person. Um, so tell us a little bit, I know that you said that price was a major, I don't know what's, Happening with this, I'm good. I don't um, that price was uh, one of their major concerns. What were some of the other surprising things that you heard from them talking to them uh, one on one? Uh, we have so many cars um, in Belize, but going around and speaking with customers, you know exactly what they want from you. Um, some of them would explain why they moved away from the post office and if we would provide certain elements or certain improvements to the post, then they will definitely want to be back at the post. So most of their sentiments are coming back to the post, but we need to improve on certain um, same day delivery, um, having better pricing structure for them. So that is what we at the post are currently working on for our customers. Great, thank you. Um, I'd like to open up questions to the floor. I have more as well, but uh, I don't want to dominate the discussion. So I'm just looking around to see if anyone had questions for our panelists before uh, we talk a little bit more. Um, there are, there's someone with a mic on either side of the room, so don't be shy. Raise your hand if, if you have any questions. We have one. Oh. Ah, hi. I'm part of the Conservative Committee, and I think everybody had very valuable points in terms of challenges and opportunities. Price, yes, that's very important. And Mr. Dumeron, I think you did a great job about saying the power of unity of network. All you people put together, I mean, if you look at the perspective, I'll try to give you two perspectives. It's not necessarily a question, but it just gave a different view. Today, if you look at, there are four elements. There are buyers, which is consumers, then you have product, and then you have e-commerce platforms, which are dominating the e-commerce, and then your last mile. If you look at post office, they lead in the first and last. 
the only organization which can go to every home, every citizen is post office. And your last mile is the largest. I think one part which is really missing is who controls the checkout. And that's where the e-commerce Lazadas and Amazons of the world are coming. But there's one big trend which is actually changing and it connects to your price. If you look at the cost of a product from the manufacturing to the person who pays for it, there are three or four elements. The cost of manufacturing, shipping, and e-commerce brokers, right? Amazon or all these guys are brokers. They usually take 15 to 20% for an online store and 30 to 40%. People don't buy because they're Amazon or they're Lasada. They buy because they're Nike, Sony, and Chanel, and Cheshire. When the brands are moving towards direct-to-consumer, with consumer, you control it. Think about a strategy in which your brands will directly engage through you to your consumers, you're already saving 30%, then cost of shipping doesn't even matter because you're not necessarily a private company to make billions of dollars like other large giants. So it's just a perspective, and that's what we socialize with many post offices. Thanks to Chief Moyo, uh, who's here for Secretary General for F. Papu. We got signed up almost 30 to 40 countries, primarily based on the model of how post office could become a consumer data hub, manage consumers, and with, as you said, interoperability and portability is very critical and how you can create a network of the manufacturers to directly reach to consumers. And that's one way you'll solve many of these issues. Thank you. Thank you. And any other questions from the floor? It's hard to, uh, it's hard to see with the lights coming in. Thank you. Hi, Marek Ruzinski, Last Mile Experts. We talked a lot about e-commerce, but one of the things that at least in Europe is developing very fast is re-commerce, companies like Vinted. Um, and there need to be new ways of serving them because of the low value of the item. What is your thinking? How can you serve items which cannot often efficiently be delivered to door? How can the post deal with that? Who wants to take that one on? I can try. Okay. But, uh, okay. so, uh, and I think this is a, I think that's a very good uh, question at least. From our view, this is a challenge we have. Uh, you have a, um, a three-euro phone cover, and it probably costs two or three euros to deliver. And um, the challenge there for uh, the postal operators and, and, and uh, any of the service providers to, to kind of step in to fulfill that gap is, is not easy. What you're hoping is you're delivering a very cheap item with many, many more expensive items. Um, so. The opportunity for, for us as postal operators is really try to consolidate as much as you can uh, into the last mile, into the milk runs, and then make the deliveries as dense as possible with as many items so you dilute the cost a little bit. Uh, but I, I really think the, the, the opportunity for us is, again, challenge ourselves, innovate, uh, and maybe disrupt ourselves a little bit by thinking of partnering with the uh, merchants here and, and bringing these items a little bit closer uh, to, the, um, um, to the end consumer. Um, looking at things like uh, converting your post office into dark stores or, or uh, warehouses that are in the neighborhoods uh, to really, again, bring down the cost of uh, the end-to-end -end delivery and kind of breaking that into chunks and making use of your already uh, uh, significant investments in your um, post offices and making that into an hour revenue generator as well for you by, by providing some basic warehousing and fulfillment services. Again, these are not traditional things that postal offices, uh, post offices do, but we're, we're, we need to evolve and we need to uh, change with the times and, and look at what the opportunities are. Not an easy uh, process, but it is something we're experimenting with at Saudi Post and Logistics. And, um, we believe there is value there and, and um, we believe that will only con continue to evolve as, as you begin to understand the end consumers better at the neighborhood level and make yourselves more available to, to merchants who are interested in reaching those customers in an efficient and, and fast manner. So that's one way to potentially try to address it. Maybe I would like to add um, on the subject uh, regarding the transparency of uh, delivery costs. So we know in the past, the customer, when buy the goods, 
there is a transparent price and customer choose uh, which service by which price uh, uh, will be uh, will be in connect with the delivery but right now something else happening that uh, e-commerce and uh, marketplaces they some kind of take of take out of us the control of uh, communication of delivery cost to the customer that means that there is no transparency anymore and they go even further that means that customer in the future won't be able to choose the provider for the for the last mile that's happening right now and i would say that probably those uh, platforms marketplaces they will create their own they will try to create their own communities some loyalty programs some kind of uh, best secret model if you know with uh, gold silver bronze uh, membership and then uh, with this model they will provide also free delivery or uh, different options for the range of the the the, the, the memberships so uh, it doesn't mean that uh, marketplace or e-commerce will provide low price or free price of delivery that doesn't mean that we as a postal operators will not on these concrete items will receive our um, price for, for for the last mile this this is not the same game anymore and uh, uh, here it will be probably a real I wouldn't say war, but <laughs> uh, very interesting, uh, very interesting activities. And who will own the customer and who will own the delivery, the delivery process. So that's the reason why we really have to become much more proactive in this, because in the past we are more, we, we were much more reactive as a postal operators. We were waiting, watching, copying, and so on. But uh, we really have to to, to change our perspective. Did you have yeah, so a, a, a little thing about e-commerce. So what we see, and it comes down to to what you're saying. If you know your consumer, you also know that in a lot of countries in Europe, people are really worried about the environment especially younger people. So you see, if you see who is on Vinted, who is on like exchanging secondhand clothing, etc., a lot of younger people are. So as a post, you have to do two things. One is to make it very easy to return things. So for example, in PostNL, you can simply give it to the deliverer and they will return it to wherever the address is. Consumer to consumer, consumer to business. But you also have to look into how can you make it as sustainable as you can be? Because that will be in future your license to operate, especially in the Western of Europe. So as PostNL, we really dedicated to having zero emission in the last mile in 2030. We're planning to do a lot of more investments and together with our partners in the Netherlands, together with our partners uh, also in the European context, like using HVO, et cetera, to address those consumer needs. And I think that will be a tough thing, and that is primarily domestically, eh, for the post to really know your consumer. In the Netherlands, we have a PostNL app. It's uh, with around 9 million users. So we use it to communicate. We use it to ask them questions. We have communities. And where, what you see there is that if you know your customer, they're more willing to say to a large platform, I want to be delivered, my, or I want to have a delivery by PostNL. So I think that is something about e-commerce. Great, thank you. And uh, tomorrow, one of the topics uh, is sustainability. So we'll yeah. be talking more about that. So definitely come back tomorrow as well.
Um, we're going to revisit this topic later this afternoon in our strategy sessions and get more into the tangible ways that we can push towards these visions. Um, after this session, we'll be talking uh, about diversification. So we're going to have a short 10-minute uh, break or so, 10 to 15 minutes, um, and then we'll come back and we'll, um, we'll start the panel on diversification. So thanks to all of you for the great discussion and for your presentations this morning. Thank you. Thank you.